Hi there, my name is Matthew Wagner and uh, for many uh, years I suffered from anxiety, uh, panic attacks and agoraphobia. Um, it got really bad, so bad that it prevented me from uh, working and doing other social activities that I really wanted to, to do. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you about how bad it was for me because this video is about helping you get better. And um, you know, fortunately now I am better because I took the appropriate steps and that's really what we're going to talk about in this video. What are the appropriate steps that you can take so that you can get better from anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia? So what are the appropriate steps? Well, first of all, uh, you need to see someone with expertise in cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a type of therapy that actually challenges your thoughts. It allows you to restructure your thoughts. Um, the process really works because it allows you to identify what are called cognitive distortions. Distortions in your thinking, which uh, presumably are causing your anxiety, your panic attacks, and agoraphobia. So once you identify that these are in fact distortions, they're, um, they're thoughts that are, that are not actually accurate, and you substitute a more accurate thought in their place, um, you then begin to feel better because the premise here, of course, is that your thoughts are ultimately um, controlling how you feel. So once you change your thinking, you change your, you know, your feelings about your anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia. And that's really a key point, is changing how you process a panic attack and how you process the idea of having a panic attack. You know? So, we've talked about the importance of cognitive behavioral therapy, but the important thing as well just as important is that you see a mental health professional who deals with cognitive behavioral therapy. In other words, who can help you with using cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, very important is to make sure that you're using a registered practitioner. So in other words, a psychologist, a registered psychologist, a, a psychiatrist, or other mental health therapist or professional that is registered with a regulatory body. In other words, you don't want just anyone out there with strange credentials who isn't registered with any regulatory body to help you. You need to have a qualified regulated practitioner. In other words, someone whose practice is going to have to follow a certain uh, set of ethical principles, who has to have ethical training, who has to have appropriate uh, education. In other words, someone who can effectively help you and has been certified to do so by a regulatory body and who also has been um, or is regulated by ethical principles. So that's very important. So be dubious of people who make claims about um, their credentials that they have, uh, you know, this or that or anything that sounds strange, check it out, you know, check it out. A couple of more tips. Stay away from quick fixes or products that, that say they're going to cure you of your anxiety panic attacks, you know, overnight. Obviously, um, a scam. Um, maybe I shouldn't say a scam, but obviously it's not just a simple matter of getting one of these things and you can be cured. I mean, if it's something that might be helpful, um, you can maybe pursue it, but you need to focus on the primary recommendations, I think, um, before going after those products. And then if you want to investigate those as supplemental things, that's fine. You need to do your own uh, proactive research, you know, into what actually works. Um, you can get a lot of information from your library, from online, but you have to check out your sources. hearing more and more today um, about holistic approaches to uh, a variety of things when we're talking about health and wellness, but in particular with panic attacks, um, the situ situation is no different. Uh, for example, there are many things you can do um, for your panic attacks um, in addition to the suggestions I've made, um, which will further uh, complement um, your recovery. Um, things as simple as uh, walking, maintaining a healthy diet, drinking adequate amounts of water, um, which I think is really important you know, and so overlooked by uh, so many people. And um, another thing would be relaxation exercises. Those are four examples alone, and they're just merely four examples. There are hundreds of things literally you can do for your panic attacks. But what you're going to do, or you're really going to find, is that by making uh, an improvement, even walking um, you know, 30 minutes to an hour a day, you'll start feeling better, um, and you'll really notice that that benefits you. Um, not just through panic attacks, but in a number of ways.
In closing, I would just like to stress a holistic approach um, to panic attacks. Uh, following the primary recommendations made in this video, uh, which I've made several, I would encourage you to go back and, and, and uh, watch the video again. But in particular, um, you need to take control of your life yourself. You need to be proactive in your recovery. And you can do that by doing your own research. Um, for instance, when I was recovering from panic attacks, I started doing research from credible sources um, on many different ways to help me with my panic attacks, and I learned a lot. And uh, now what I've done is I've put together a free newsletter for other people to help other people with their panic attacks. But the point is you need to uh, take charge of your life. And um, I would encourage you once again to go back and listen to this video. But I think that if you uh, try the suggestions in this video, and um, you always remain proactive in your recovery, that you'll be well on the road to recovery and improving your life. Uh, take care.